Hey guys, it's Frank from Cruising with Wheels. Now I know that you know where I am right now, in our spare room. Now in another video, Kevin gave you a glimpse of what is in this room to prepare for our next cruise. But what he didn't tell you is how it all got here. Look at all this stuff. I'm going to take you through the process, the planning, and the organization of what goes into our cruises. I'll show you what's in my tote bag, Kevin's backpack, our carry-on luggage, and our big 28-inch check luggage. In this five-part series of what to pack and our countdown to the NCL Bliss Alaska Cruise 2018. Now, once we've decided uh, where we're going, and Kevin has booked everything, you know, I'm in the office and I pull a file out and I download all my organizational forms because that's pretty much how Kevin and I have separated our responsibilities. I am the organizer, okay? Kevin does all the research, uh, gets the best deals, uh, books everything, works out the discounts, works out all the free amenities, you know, and does all that. And I'm in charge of the paperwork and the organization, the financials. I am the archivist. I'm the record keeper, okay? That's my job. So that's pretty much how we separate the responsibilities. So as I leave the office with all that organizational stuff uh, having been planned out in there, I move into the spare room where I start sorting out exactly what we need. And of course, the spare room becomes what you see it today, which is everything laid out uh, for what we're going to take on our next cruise. And I'm going to take you through the process of how it all got in here and why it's in here and what we take. Now, once I do all the organization and we go this through the selection process and down the travel checklist, we get to the final moments because Kevin's big responsibility after his initial day one of booking the cruise is to really kind of do the packing, which is what he's really good at. Um, you know, I know what's going in my toad and his backpack, but when you get to the carry-on uh, piece of luggage and then the big 28-inch checked bag, that's where Kevin comes into play and all his packing skills. He's a master packer, okay? And we're going to go through all of that in this series of packing videos. Let's take a look at what's in the closet in the spare room and what we've picked out to go on this Alaskan cruise. We'll start with my selection. Now, you all know, oh, there you go. Plaid is everywhere. Frank just loves that plaid. Well, yeah, I kind of do. I need pattern in my life. I mean, my pants are all solid colors, so why would I wear a solid shirt with a solid pant? That's just a little crazy. But anyways, I have a selection of long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts, and what I did was every one of them pretty much has a nice t-shirt to match. Oh, look at, oh, see the shirt? Navy, kind of green with a rust-colored stripe in it. Yes, there's a rust-colored t-shirt to match. How clever. Oh, I must be putting that with my tan khaki pants. I then have a plaid linen shirt, t-shirts, multiple colored striped shirts. <gasps> Would that be going with my brand new brown pants? Could be. So I've divided all of this. The khaki tans, the brown, the grays, 
and all the shirts here that are going to go with my navy pants. My travel is going to be in jeans. Okay, um, they'll be comfortable. And uh, for this cruise, as you can see, there's only one pair of shorts. It's not a Caribbean cruise, it's an Alaskan cruise. And you know what? Temperatures can go anywhere from 50s up to the 80s during the day, who's to say? And when you're on the ship and you're getting warm, you might want to be in your shorts. So Kevin and I decided we're bringing one pair of shorts each. Now also, I have um, two fleece jackets and Kevin and I each have a brand new kind of Columbia quilted jacket that we purchased. I have the olive one and he has another color. Now you can see his color palette is very different from mine. Mine are pretty much basic navies, uh, blues. Uh, I'm trying to get more color, like a little bit of orange and green in there. But his palette is very, very different. As uh, you saw in a previous video he did, he got this really cool shirt and it's got sharks on it. And I wish I had one, but he bought that because we're going to Alaska and he thought, oh, fish on a shirt would be great. But um, solid color, nice soft pastel green. Uh, he does a lot of pinks and fuchsias, a lot of pastel light colors. Um, there's some orange in there, and everybody knows he's famous for his pink hoodie. And there's um, his Columbia jacket um, that he bought and he's going to wear. So we brought all the clothes in here. And again, as I said, um, it's an Alaskan cruise. And so we kind of took out all the bright Caribbean colors. Okay, all the really, you know, pur bright purples and pinks and fuchsias and bright oranges and, you know, yellows and things that you would see as Caribbean colors, we, we took those out and it's a more subdued uh, palette uh, for traveling to Alaska. Um, so, uh, we gathered up everything, threw it all in the closet, and then one day I said, you know, Kevin, we got to go in there and we kind of have to um, whittle down. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a seven-day cruise. It's not an 11-day. Uh, and we have to decide what we're taking. And we always take a little extra. Uh, and as I said before, I have some shirts I wear during the day when we go on excursions and we're out about on the ship. And then I have some shirts like this blue linen one it's dressier I wear with dinner um, and uh, same with him so there you go we whittled it down we made our final wardrobe decision and now I know exactly what I'm going to have to iron when I pick the day when I do my uh, fast and furious uh, ironing and then the folding begins. Now I start the organizational process by creating a shopping list for the particular cruise. Because, you know, every cruise can be a bit different. Now what's on my shopping list? Now the shopping list is put together uh, for a particular itinerary. Now in this case, we'll, we're going to Alaska. So we're focusing on more pants and maybe some sweatshirts and some lightweight sweaters. Uh, we did buy some brand new winter gloves and scarves and hats. You know, they were all on sale after the holidays. Uh, Kevin got some sneakers and shoes. I got some uh, pants and a new pair of jeans. Uh, and then we also had to replenish some basics, which is, you know, things that we used up on our last cruise and I need to buy more travel size Listerine, um, some more razors and razor blades, some travel size shaving gel. You know, I've got to get my coffee creamer. Uh, he needs his gum. 
which he always has to have. And of course, I replenish my snack bag, which is, you know, some theater candy and, you know, crackers and Pop-Tarts and things like that. Now, on this cruise, we're going to be part of the Cruise Critic Meet and Greet. And we uh, have all decided that we're going to bring some gifts from our hometowns and we're going to exchange them. So that was on the list. Uh, there's also some uh, theme parties. So we went out and tried to get some costumes for that. Also, you know, I got to make sure I have enough dog food for the babies when they go on their little vacation and Angela watches them. As well as I want to make sure that we use this opportunity to change the filter in the furnace. It's a kind of a great way to keep that on the list. So that's our shopping list and you might have a whole variety of other things to put on yours. Now as you can see is what I said it's an Alaska trip. It's not a Caribbean which means there are less shorts um, there are less kind of bright colored Caribbean shirts that we're going to take. Uh, so we needed to add a little bit more in the way of buying clothing than we have in the past shopping lists where we were on all these West Caribbean, East Caribbean, and Southern Caribbean cruises. So the shopping list changes a bit depending on where we go. The next thing I want to talk about is the clothing inventory. And I type it up in my computer, um, and here it is, take a look, and we're going to go over it real quick. It's an inventory, uh, a list of my things and Kevin's things, to make sure we have enough to cover the amount of time we're going to be on the cruise. Um, it's, it's a list, and it's taken from the master travel checklist, but it, it's making sure that we have everything we need. And it goes through hats and t-shirts and short sleeve shirts and long sleeve shirts and knit shirts, sweaters and pants and jeans and jackets and socks and underwear. You know, Kevin will never go on vacation unless he has brand new socks and underwear. You know, pajamas and shoes and sneakers and any kind of special outerwear that we need to take. And that's the clothes inventory. And... I make sure that everything is purchased and I've recorded everything on this list. And you know, as I said, I'm the record keeper. And this helps me for future cruises because creating um, a paper trail or a history uh, is going to help you for future cruises. And when, so you book the next one, you say to yourself, well, what did I take on the last cruise? I was on. Uh, and what's the difference between the last cruise, or maybe the cruise before that, and the one we just booked? So creating a paper trail and a history is, is really going to help you out in the future. And I'm a believer, as you know, preparation is key. So this is really going to help you for the future. All right? The next thing I want to talk about is, you know, very important. It's the travel checklist. The travel checklist actually has 141 items on it. Now, that's just main items. But if you multiply it out, which is the number of shirts and pants and socks and underwear, you're talking that this room is filled with almost 200 items that need to be packed. And um, it's what we feel we need uh, to make sure that we have everything because basically you're going away for whatever, five days, seven days, 10 days, 12 days, and you, you kind of have to have things at your fingertips, I believe, like you would have uh, as if you were at home. So this checklist is very, very important to us. And I also monitor, as you saw on it, I monitor our weight when we leave and when we return and the type of luggage that we took on this particular trip. So the travel checklist, it's the heart of everything that we do. The next thing I want to talk about is my luggage planogram. Now you're wondering, what the heck is that? Well, you know, I spent nearly 40 years in retail.
And my stores were planogrammed out, meaning there was a place for everything and everything in its place. And corporate decided that in this aisle, on this shelf, was a particular item. And the shelf or the floor area was planogrammed out. And when you went into any of our different location stores, the store was identical. That's a planogram. Now, I've created a planogram for every piece of luggage that we're going to take. And we're taking, as usual, my tote bag, Kevin's backpack, a 21-inch carry-on for the plane, and a 28-inch large piece of luggage that will be checked through the airlines. So, my three-page planogram, as you will see, and I'm going to show you, accounts for every item that is on our travel checklist. So when people say, I can't believe everything in this room, you're going to be able to pack? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding, because I have a planogram. And I know exactly what goes in my tote, what goes in his backpack, what is going to go in their carry-on, and what is going to be checked through the airline because it's all right here. And you know what? It also helps us on the ship when we're done and we're ending our cruise and we're repacking. And you, you're not going to go, oh my God, where did this go? Where did you put that? The planogram comes with me when we travel. It's in my folder that I take with us. So how it's packed to go on the cruise is pretty much how it's packed when we're coming home from the cruise. So let's take a look at the planogram. We start out with my shoulder tote and I have specific items in it. Things that uh, I want to keep safe, uh, things like the laptop computer, uh, my, my uh, travel binder, uh, which is the Bible we take, uh, my, my dob kit, which has all my personal items. Um, my, uh, my diary um, and notebooks uh, that I use to record all the interesting things that go on uh, on a minute-by-minute -minute basis as we travel. Personal items, sunglasses and eyeglasses, um, all the paperwork that we're bringing with us with our Cruising with Wheels channel that we have to look into. My camera, uh, travel clocks, business cards, just, you know, things like that. Now, in the carry-on luggage, as you can see, it's just an assortment of clothes, okay? Just certain amount of basic socks and underwears and shirts and pants and whatever. Um, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, as you can see below, um, I have, when we talk about uh, what's in my dob kit, what's in the purple snack bag, I have it broken down. So, if you see in the shoulder tote, there's a 311 bag. You can see on the bottom what's in the 311 bag. If I say I have a purple snack bag in my shoulder tote, I break it down what's actually in the snack bag. So it's very, very detailed. If we go to page two, we talk about Kevin's backpack. Now, Kevin is in charge of all the major things like uh, video equipment. He carries the camera and the camera case and all of that, and the electronics and the, the cell phone. He carries all our medication. He carries um, his personal dob kits and 311 bag, but again, he also carries um, the money and the passports uh, and things like that. Those are in, the, in, in, in uh, Kevin's backpack. So um, he's in charge of that. If we go to the last page, it's all about the large 28-inch checked luggage. And again, things are broken down by small purple cube 1, 2, and 3. And again, you can see on the bottom what is actually in those purple cubes. But basically, it's the remainder of our clothes. Okay, What we put in the large check bag is basically what, a uh, God forbid if it was lost, eh, we wouldn't suffer without. That's my planogram. So yes, everything you see here is going in the four pieces of luggage. Easy peasy. That's why we're doing this five-part series.
We're going to show you how it all goes together. And here's a picture of the four-piece luggage set that we're going to take. It's very simple. It's very basic. I'm sure uh, everyone can look at it and say, oh yeah, that's pretty much what I take. Now I want to talk about carry-on luggage versus checked luggage and what goes in them. Well, basically, um, the 21-inch carry-on piece that we take on the plane, um, it's the clothing that if um, you, were, you had to jump off the plane and save something, that's what you're taking. If your luggage was lost um, and it, it, it got dumped in the river uh, 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 before you boarded the ship, you had your carry-on. What you can't live without. So when we uh, divvy up all our clothes, we look at our 21-inch carry-on and we say, okay, um, if we're going to bring four pairs of pants each, two of those are going to go in the carry-on. Of all the shirts and t-shirts, a selection of my shirts are going to go in there. A selection of Kevin's shirts are going to go in there. A small selection of socks and underwear uh, for Kevin as well as myself are going to go in there. It's what you're going to need, God forbid, your large piece of luggage is lost. The whole planning of this is not to put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, why would you put everything in your checked luggage and then the airline loses it? Or on the last cruise, we were on the NCL Jade. We didn't get our luggage till 10.30 at night. We thought it was lost. As it turns out, um, the cruise tag had been ripped off and they didn't know whose luggage it was except to research it from our basic luggage tag that was attached. Um, and we also, uh, I want to tell you that, we also have a typed up uh, on the computer uh, our name, address, and phone number, and that piece of paper is inside every piece of luggage we have. So if every tag is ripped off, the cruise tag, our personal ID tag, they would be able to open up any piece of luggage and they would find right on top a sheet of paper saying who we are, where we live, and our phone number and would be able to contact us. So, I mean, if that large piece of luggage had been lost, at least Kevin and I had the carry-on because we keep that with us. When we go to the cruise terminal and we're boarding, the, you know, we get out of the cab at the terminal, we only hand uh, the, uh, the luggage uh, crew at the terminal our large piece of luggage. That's all we give them. I slip them some money. I give them a, probably five bucks. Thank you for working hard. Here's my large you know, piece of luggage. You know, it's right here. Okay, Please don't lose it. Make sure it gets on the trolley and on the ship. But Kevin and I always keep the little carry-on with us along with my tote and his backpack and we keep it and we don't care we, we, we carry it with us I mean I, ha I can have it on my lap and if the room isn't ready you know and we go straight uh, to the restaurant to have lunch we bring it with us but that stuff is staying with us okay because we want to make sure we have at least some clothes uh, with us, God forbid, the bid piece is lost. And that's how we plan it all out. Preparation is key. Getting to the final process, uh, taking a look at the ironing process and the folding of the clothes. And so I will go through, and you know what? It's crazy, but I can pretty much get all our clothes ironed in one day. I've done it. I mean, sometimes you kind of you know, Kevin will say, why are you killing yourself? Oh my God, you don't have to do that all in one day. Well, you know what? Sometimes you get on a roll, you know, and I'm ironing and I'm sitting on my stool, you know, in, the, in my laundry room and I got the TV on and you get on a roll and I'm just kind of cranking it all out and I got everything ironed. All the t-shirts, all the short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, the pants, everything is ironed. Boom, done. 
and then pretty much we take it to the dining room, we clear the table, the luggage, and pretty much everything that you see in this room is slowly brought down to the dining room. We're, and that's our staging area to start to fold all the clothes and get it ready to select what is going to go in what bag. And so, you know, here's a picture, one of my shirts, fold it up and ready to go in. The last thing I want to talk about is labeling our clothes. Now, sounds a little crazy, labeling, labeling your clothes. What is this, granimals? What am I, a child? But you know what? You know that Kevin and I make so many decisions here at home, okay? And it allows us, when we're on the ship and on our cruise, not to have to make decisions. It gives us more time to enjoy our vacation. So I have uh, made a sheet. Um, it's a labeling sheet. And this is mine, and I'm going to put it up right here, and you can look at it. Uh, I'm bringing khaki pants, brown pants, gray pants, and navy pants. And so what I do is I cut these little labels out, and I attach them to the shirt that's going to match the pants. So once I've whittled out my clothes and I've gone through them and I decide what shirts I'm taking, I then mix and match my shirts with my pants. So when I'm done ironing and I'm folding, I attach in the label of the shirt the corresponding colored pant that that shirt will go to. As you can see on the bottom, I also know uh, my cruise travel outfit when I'm going uh, the day we leave, and a label for the outfit I'm going to wear when we come home from the cruise. It's very easy uh, when you're on the ship to open the closet and to know that as I say, oh, I'm going to wear this shirt, I know what the corresponding pant is. Seems kind of silly, but you know, uh, some of them are like, oh, I can wear the khakis, I can wear the navy, should I put it with gray? I don't know. Oh God, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in a wardrobe dilemma. I want to know, I'm pulling the shirt, it says I'm wearing that with khaki pants, and that's what I'm wearing. Some of my shirts are casual for the day. Some of my shirts are a little bit more dressy, like the linen ones. I'm going to wear those at dinner. And some of those are, uh, we have some, uh, some nice pullover v-neck lightweight sweaters. So there's a variety of things that we're going to wear. So it's something that we do, or I've created, and ain't, ain't, Kevin would say, oh, you're so anal retentive. God, get over yourself. But, you know, it's part of my organizational mantra. It's, it's, it's part of my soul. I can't help it. It's the way I am. Preparation is key. Now, I know Kevin took you through our room on a previous video, but I'm going to go through it uh, in a little bit more detail. I have set up the usual card table uh, where I have, oh, there's my tote. That's the tote that I carry, uh, and I have my things in it, and you'll see that in the next video, what goes in that tote that I say is important. I've got my shoes, and I only have two, two pairs of shoes, uh, the brown and tan and the grays. They, they go with everything. Uh, the brown ones are a little bit heavier. I always wear the heavy ones when I travel, and I pack the light ones in the suitcase. Because remember, you, know, you're, you might be on a suitcase weight constraint, and you want to make sure it's not oversized. Wear the heavy ones pack the lighter ones. Then, of course, we have our luggage straps. We have basic black luggage, and we bought these because, you know, they're bright orange, you know, this plaid, and we thought it would, would be easy to identify as it came uh, off the carousel. So, uh, and it's funny, every, every time we buy brand new straps because we think they're different, everyone else seems to have the same ones. Kind of crazy. The purple packets, and those of you that have watched our videos know about the purple packets. 
their organizational packets. I have one for the uh, for our dog groomer who babysits our lovely Cece and Delilah. He gets a packet and it has all the instructions and his payment for watching the puppies. I have a packet for my sister. Uh, it includes uh, pretty much a lot of legal documents and our wills and copies of uh, every identification we have and our complete itinerary. So God forbid if the plane goes down or the ship goes down, uh, my sister's in charge and she has uh, all the legal things she needs. The final one is for our wonderful friend Donna. And Donna gets the set of keys because she'll be house sitting for us and watching the house. And again, she has pretty much our itinerary, uh, how to work the, uh, the uh, security system, and uh, she takes care of everything for us. <gasps> the famous Bible. Yes, my wonderful Bible. I carry it in my tote bag. I am in charge of it. And uh, it has everything we need to function on this cruise. Oh, there's Kevin's brand new pair of shoes he bought at the Skechers store. He's so excited about it. There's Kevin's backpack. That's where he keeps all the important stuff. And here we've started uh, a collection of what Kevin will put in there, which is a lot of the camera equipment we use for Cruising with Wheels channel and our filming. And right next to it, I would say, is the most important part of the trip. Frank's snacks. Yes, people, the snacks. Oh, let's take a look. What are we bringing? Gosh, why is Frank so obsessed with his snacks? Well, hey, you know me. I am not going to pay $10 at an airport for a bag of combos. It ain't going to happen. I'll starve to death first before I do that. So I create two snack bags. This is one of them. And this is the second one. And I have four boxes of theater candy. I have two for Kevin. He loves his Whoppers and his Reese's Pieces. I love Mike and Ike and my beloved Dots. Uh, and then we have the Pop-Tarts. Gotta have those. Brought two packages of strawberry. And this time I'm gonna buy, uh, and I'm gonna pack the uh, Little Debbie's Oatmeal Cream Pies. And you can see I've already emptied the box and I got six of them in this plastic container. Now I saved the container. Uh, it was purchased at the local grocery store. Kevin bought some, I don't know, chocolate chip cookies. And you know me, don't throw that container away. I could probably use it. And of course Kevin's response is, oh my God, you're like an old lady. What do you save aluminum foil too? Well, hey, if I don't use it and I think I'm gonna need it, yeah, I'm gonna save it. What are we, the Rockefellers? can't afford all this stuff. So I create two snack bags. So I, each one is going to have a combo. Each one is going to have a set of theater candy and some cream pies. Uh, one will go into the checked bag and one will go in my shoulder tote. And so the one in my shoulder tote is the one we're going to, you know, snack on may, maybe on the way down to, uh, or I should say not down, but over uh, across country to Seattle. Now on the way home from Seattle to Rochester, New York, that's when the second bag goes from check luggage into my tote. And I now have that uh, and we'll snack on that on our cross country trip home. Because again, the only thing I probably want to be spending money on is maybe something to drink at the airport. But I am not going to spend, you know, a fortune on basic snacks I can get here at home. Theater candy, 99 cents. Combos, free at the casino. Thank you. So let's continue off onto the bed. What is here? Oh, there's lots of purple packing cubes. Well, first of all, we have here, now these are gifts. I've packed these gifts. These are the um, Rochester, New York gifts that we're going to exchange at the Cruise Critic meet and greet. And I've wrapped them up. Uh, so that they're protected. I'm not going to, you know, tell you what they are. We'll show you the day uh, we do the meet and greet. Uh, and I've got some, um, we bought some gift bags and some pretty colored tissue paper to put them in. Uh, next we have 
uh, decorations for their doors. Yeah, there's some cutouts, and they have it's a nautical theme. Kevin got them at the party outlet, and he's kind of excited. And we're going to put that on our cabin door outside. Oh, there's Kevin's Orbit gum, a three pack. One he carries with him, two, it goes in the snack bag for future use. Cruise would not be complete and would not happen unless I had my hazelnut coffee make creamer pods. It's a liquid, it will go into the check luggage. Then I have um, two expandable tote bags, and we got these free. We are members of AARP, and with each membership renewal, they sent us a foldable, expandable tote. And I take that with us. You can see they're not very big. They don't take up much room. Um, and I use them when we buy all our gifts. And uh, because on the way home, you know, nobody really cares about the luggage. We check both carry-on and the big piece. We check it through so that when we get on the plane, the only thing we have is my tote bag, his backpack, and an expandable tote filled with gifts and souvenirs because they are precious. Next, we have a packing cube. And what we have in it is uh, a notebook and uh, I have a uh, cough drop, throat, throat drop, and acid tablets, the band-aids, our body soap, uh, an assortment of uh, over-the-counter medicines. I have a bike lock uh, to lock up my wheelchair if we're out in port and I need to. Uh, and uh, well, some things here are personal and we won't get into that. Hello! We've got some uh, Cottonelle bathroom wipes. Have to bring the wheelchair toolkit. And of course, another purple packing cube, which has things like travel Kleenex, little hand towelettes, air freshener, uh, suntan lotion, and um, mini flashlights, and all sorts of accoutrements that we will take with us. I am bringing one of Kevin's day bags from previous cruises because I found out that on the Caribbean cruise we were on, apparently I was just holding all this crap in my lap and I thought, how stupid. Bring uh, a small day bag so I can, you know, as we gather up souvenirs and brochures and things that we bring back home and back to the ship, I have a place to put them. Hmm, God, Frank, activate a brain cell, why don't you? There's more clothing on the bed. We have Frank's underwear, a couple of varieties, some hats. I have my uh, uh, long sleeve shirts and some sweaters, and Kevin has his sweaters. There's his uh, dress sandals and kind of beachy sandals. Um, you know, he wasn't going to bring them, but I know him. And when his uh, leg swells and his feet swell, I said, you are not going to want to stay in your shoes and sneakers. You are going to want to pop those off and get in some sandals. Uh, my assortment of socks and uh, Kevin's underwear in his socks. And then, of course, you have extras that we're going to bring because, you know, exciting things are going on on the cruise ship. There are several themed events. Now, one of them is uh, a masquerade. Uh, event and so we decided to buy some masks and again we put it out there who's wearing which one then there's a western night and we're like well what do we do is it a western night is it in dress up or is it just a basic theme uh, where you're in regular western wear we don't know but you know we're bringing our denim jeans and I'm sure I could find a plaid shirt but I said you know Kevin buy some bandanas for us and then he ends up buying me the sheriff's badge, sheriff's badge, and these goofy little miniature hats. I don't know what he thinks we're doing with those. It's kind of goofy. So 
when you go on a cruise, it, there, there could be several theme nights. And we get the question, oh my God, what do I have to bring? Well, you know what? You don't have to bring anything. And you don't have to participate in the themed nights. It, it, only if you want to. There are people that just, they don't, they don't dress up. They don't want to do it. It's, it's, it's just, you know, more stuff for them to uh, pack in a suitcase. Um, and so you don't have to do any of this. If you don't want to, it's no big deal. Huh. Then there are people that I've seen, I swear to God, uh, they're getting on board the ship with a steamer trunk loaded with costumes, elaborate costumes. So, you know, it's what you want to do and what you're comfortable with. Now, you all know our costumes. We only do them here at home and, you know, throw them in the spare room here. And there are some of the things we've worn in previous videos. But as you can see, all of this on the bed, on the table, in the closet. Oh, wait, there's more on the dresser. Holy moly, yeah. The dresser's where I put all the personal things. My dab kit, his dab kit, uh, the 311 bags, passports, wallet, jewelry, um, you know, eyeglasses, sunglasses. Oh, God, don't forget our coffee mugs. Can't live without that. But, um, yeah, all of this is going to be packed. And that's why I'm doing this video, because we're going to show you how it all works. So... There you have it. The final videos are going to show you Kevin's packing skills. And he's going to show you a variety of techniques from uh, using packing cubes, um, basic folding, rolling, and stuffing. Oh, you can just see how all of this is going to get into the luggage. Because people will say, that's a lot of stuff. But Kevin's going to show you, using all these techniques, how to do it. Thanks for joining me today, and watch for my next video of my tote bag, and find out what goes in it and why. On a special note, it's May 5th, and I know that it's Cinco de Mayo, but it's also a special day in our house. We call it Kevin's second birthday. Now, you all know, maybe, Kevin was adopted 43 years ago today by loving parents Marilyn and Tom. Oh, and P.S. Mom, yeah, thanks for the pink flamingos. <laughs> Those of you that watched our NCL Jade vlogs know that Kevin was obsessed with the pink flamingos when we were on the island of Bonaire and kept talking about putting pink flamingos in our front yard. Well, I just remember those crazy giant 1950s pink flamingos I used to see on TV and in people's yards. And I said, no way. But these are kind of small and kind of cute. So they might end up in our garden. Thanks, Mom. So on behalf of Kevin and myself from Cruising with Wheels, remember, travel safe and cruise often. <laughs>